22. Tehillim 22. I am trying to brush it too. Tehillim 22, verse 16. Karu yadai ve raglai. They pierced. Now, ah, and then the anti-missionaries who wrote the, who changed the Masoretic text. Changed the word in Tehillim 22, 16 from karu to ke which is like a lion. Now, does that make a difference? Like a lion, they pierced, they're at my hands and my feet, versus they pierced my hands and my feet. Does that make a difference? Like a lion versus they pierced, trying to nullify this prophecy. To that of Yahweh. Verse 13. I love the book of Barnabas. What a book. What a treasure. What a treasure Yahweh has restored to us in our lifetime. Where has it been all these years? It's been on some dusty shelf somewhere all these years. And Yahweh has restored it in our lifetime. Again, for, you, for the skeptics out there, the first copy of the Greek New Testament included this book as the last book after Revelation. Is it in the Aramaic? No, not at all. But neither is Revelation. Neither is First and Second Peter. And neither is First, Second, and Third John in the, in the Aramaic. So we're left with the Greek. What do we do? In some cases, we're left with the Greek. Amen? To Darabai Yahweh. I said to Darabai Yahweh. That's what I thought you saw. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Drive nails into my flesh. Why? For the synagogues of evil men. Notice. Write it down. Evil. For the synagogues of evil men have risen against me. Now this is scripture in Gideon chapter 2 I believe it is. Verse 9, that says, I will make them who are of the synagogue of the Satan come and worship at your feet. And so we got a whole bunch of anti Semites, or those who have bought into anti Semitic doctrine, who say, Oh, that's the Jews. Eh? Yahweh calls the Jews the synagogue of Satan. Hush your mouth. The synagogue of Satan are any congregation who denies the gospel. That's the synagogue of Satan. More than that. More than that. It said, read the whole verse in 2.9. It says, I will make those who say they are Jews, but they're not. So the synagogue of Satan can't be Jews because it's a bunch of folks who say they are Jews, but they ain't. I never heard that before read the scripture. <laughs> it's been there for hundreds of years. The folks that Rosh, that the Yochanan was referring to were some folks who were claiming to be Israelites without following the Torah, even claiming to be Jews. And, ya and Yahweh, through Yochanan, the, the beloved, says, you're not Jews. You are in the synagogue, but you're in the synagogue of S period, A period. Ten. Oh. Essay 10. Because you say you're Jews and you're not. You know any religious people who celebrate Easter, who say they are the new Israel, but they're not? Islam claims to be the new chosen people. They are the new Jews. They are the new Israel. Almost every false religion claims to be the new Israel. They say they are Jews, but they're not. There's a group in Miami. And they go around putting on 666. Have you heard of this group? They're the new Israel. Then there's another group of a whole bunch of black folks. We're the new Israel. White folks have no place in this Israel. Then there's a white group and say, if you're a person of color, you're not Israel. You've got to be white to be Israel. They, they are of the synagogue of Satan. They say they're Jews and they're not. Amen. That's the synagogue of Satan. Amen. In Yahweh's synagogue, there is belief. In Satan's synagogue, there is fear, doubt, and unbelief in the equality of men in Yeshua. One nation under Yahweh with liberty and justice for all. Baruch Hashem Yahweh, somebody. Amen.
And we and we and we got to be wise to these groups. You know why we got to be wise to these groups? Because they're right here in our backyard. Right here. And how many tortured souls I've had come to me. And they come with a smile. And they come with, Hail, Rabbi! Hail, Rabbi! But I know what spirit. And they start asking me, Rabbi, you know the scripture there? Jeremiah. He says, I am God. I am black. Right there. See, God is black. Then I have other people come to me and say, I am white with my glory. I am white with my tiferet. So that means if anybody isn't white, there's no tiferet. See, I know those spirits that come to me. I, they, for some reason, Satan sends them to me. As soon as they open their mouth, I know what spirit. As soon as they open their mouth. So Yeshua says, spare my soul from the sword, but do not spare my soul from the nails. Drive those nails into my flesh. Because the synagogue of the evil men, the evil men are not Israelites, they are unbelievers. Yahweh doesn't see evil like you see evil, Brit. White man, black man, Spanish man, English man. This is a miracle that English people and Spanish people like each other at B'nai Yeshua Synagogue. It's a miracle. I went to St. Augustine. Read up on the history of St. Augustine, Florida. Tell me about the history of Spanish and, and English people. Tremendous variance, tremendous hatred. Only in Yeshua we can make this this, this thing right. Yes. Equality, love. Equality. English and Spanish people loving each other, praying for each other, getting along with each other, ministering to each other. Two cultures have become one as Israel and Yeshua. Verse 14. Again he said, Behold, I have given my back to the scourging. Barnabas Barna 514. And my cheeks to the buffeting. My face have I set as a hard rock. Notice. My back. My cheeks. My face. My body. My cheeks, my face, my back. Not Mary's. Not, nothing gotten from Mary. My own. Barnabas chapter 6. Barnabas chapter 6. Verse 1. Part 3, Bridge over Barnaba. When therefore he made the Torah, what said he? Oh man, now, now we're going now, now to get a little bit into the deeper things, alright? Turn to your neighbor and say deeper things. Turn to your other neighbor and say things deeper. Thanks. Now we're getting into things deeper. Now, when therefore he made the Torah, still speaking of the one who allowed them to drive nails into his hands, Still speaking of the one who allowed them to put nails in his hands. When he made the Torah, Yeshua is the author of the Torah. According to Barnaba. Don't you wish this was back where it should be? Amen? Amen. According to Barnaba, Yeshua authored the Torah. He made the Torah. And he said, who is he who disputes with me? Let him resist me. Or who is he that contends with me? Let him draw near to the Son of Yahweh. Did you get that? The Son of Yahweh is speaking in the first person and claims that he made the Torah. And that's what we learned today. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with Yahweh, and the Word was Yahweh. In the beginning was the living Torah, and the living Torah became his, his own flesh. There is no Torah but our Torah, and there is no flesh but his flesh. So he couldn't have had our flesh. Because if he had our flesh, then all of us would have a Torah to offer the world. And we don't all have our own Torah to offer the world. We all have to buy into the old one and only Torah. So his flesh, being the living Torah, had to be a separate living Torah than any other flesh in the world. Amen. So when 
when he made the Torah, he said, no one can resist me. <laughs> no one can contend with me. And so now draw near to me, the son of Yahweh. Here in Barnabas 6.1, Yeshua claims to make the Torah. And he says, no one can withstand my Torah. Why? Because I am the son of Yahweh who gave the Torah. This is all in the epistle of Barnabas, brothers and sisters. It don't get any better than this. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Verse 2. Yeshua wrote, made, and gave his, the Torah. The Son of Yahweh. Woe unto you, verse 2. Barnabas 6, 2. Woe unto you, for you shall wax old as a garment. Thanks for the reminder, Father. Thanks for the reminder. You shall wax old as a garment, and the moth shall devour you. Can we talk? How many watched the news recently? Tammy Faye Baker, she was on Larry King a couple of days before she died, right? And they asked her why she wanted to be crematorioed, cremated. She, and she's sitting there, I don't want the bugs to eat me. What? Yeah, that's what she told Larry King. That's what she told, that's what she told Larry King. They want, they want the bugs to eat. <laughs> because she knew that she knew. She knew what the scriptures teach. Look. We wax old as a garment, and then the, the, the bugs, the moths, and the insects, or the worms, whatever, devour us. Sorry for the little dose of reality. And again the prophet said, since he has been placed as a strong stone, circle that word strong stone, for crushing, behold I will place on the foundation of Zion a stone and precious elect, a chief cornerstone of great price. I lay in Zion a foundation, a stone. Right? Barnaba knew this before us, before we had ever made a song. Lie, 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 for Barnaba, lie, 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 lie. But notice, yet. Yahweh made Yeshua a chief cornerstone of great price, precious, the foundation of the rebuilding of Zion, for crushing the pride of both houses and the sin of both houses. I love what Yeshua, I'm still trying to figure out what Yeshua said in that verse. How many know what I'm talking about? When Yeshua said, when the stone lands on you, good for you, but if you trip over it, Bad for you. I'm still trying to understand what Yeshua meant. You ever wonder about that verse? If the stone crushes you to powder, or you can trip over the stone. Well, which one do you want me to do, Father? I mean, one time I'm crushed and one time I trip. What's better for me? Crushing or tripping? And Yahweh says it's better that you're crushed. If you trip, you're not coming willingly to the chief cornerstone. But if you let it crush your pride, your arrogance, and your own plans, and adopt my plans, and my vision, and my future, blessed are you among men. Let the rock crush you, Yeshua. The rock crush your own self-sufficiency, and your own independence, and your own ways. Verse 3, Barnabas 6.3. And then what said he? He that believes in him shall live forever. Now, the scripture says in Yeshayahu 26, he that believes on him shall what? Not be ashamed. But Barnabas says yes. And the way that shame is removed is through the impartation. Notice. Through the, listen, through, listen, notice, through the impartation of eternal life. So the actual scripture says... He that believes in him shall not be ashamed. But Barnabas changes it. He paraphrases it, even as Rav Shaul does many times in his writings. And says, verse 3, Barnabas 6, 3. Then what said he? He that believes in this author, giver of Torah, this chief cornerstone of great price, will, not, will have all their shame removed. They will not be ashamed. And therefore, when all shame is removed, life is revealed. Does that make sense? When shame is removed, life is revealed. I'll say that again. 
When shame is removed, life is revealed. So he does what the anti-missionaries accuse Pablo of doing whoop, all the time. Do you know how many times the New Testament, I'm using the New Testament for a reason. Do you know how many times the New Testament takes a verse from the Tanakh and changes that verse to make it fit the Nazarene Israelite faith? And all the anti-missionaries go, aha! Can I give you an example since you guys look so excited? Can I give you an example? Oh yes. Don't kid yourself. The Brit Chalashah takes tremendous liberty with the Tanakh. It takes a scripture and changes it. And then the anti-missionaries go, you see, it's a false Bible. Paul and Peter and Pedro couldn't even quote it accurately. How can the New Testament be inspired when it can't even quote the Tanakh accurately? And don't tell me, oh, the Holy Ghost will tell you what to say. Don't, don't, don't give me that nonsense. You better have some answers. That's right. You better have something. Let me give you an example, and then I'll get back to Barnabas. Let's pick one out of a hat. Romeo 11. Romeo 11. Let's, let's try verse 28. Romeo. Romeo. Is anyone enjoying? Amen. I said, is anyone enjoying? Amen. How about the people that are not here? Are they enjoying? Yes! If they're listening on the radio, you've got the quiz right. Ro Romeo 11, 26. And so called Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer, meaning Mashiach, who will turn away wickedness from Yaakov. That is inaccurate. That is misquoted from Isaiah. Misquoted. The actual quote in Isaiah... Hello? The actual quote in Isaiah says the opposite. So here we see in Romans 11, 26, Rabshul taking liberty with the scripture in Isaiah and saying, and all Israel will be saved, as it is written, the deliverer will come out of Zion and turn away wickedness from Yaakov. Right? Wrong. Isaiah says the opposite. Isaiah says, and then when wickedness is removed from Yaakov, then the deliverer will come. Is there a difference? Is there a difference? According to Pablo, according to Paul, when the redeem, they shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and it will be up to the, the blood of the deliverer to turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Right? That's not what Isaiah says. Isaiah says the deliverer ain't coming until Jacob turns from ungodliness. Is that a difference? So that's why you need to study. That's why you need to be a scholar. Completely misquoted. If I say to you, I'll take you shopping when the taxi comes, or if I say to you, the taxi's here, now you can go shopping. Is that different? One, the taxi's there. One, you're waiting for the taxi. One, you've got to be ready for the taxi. The other, you don't have to be ready. The taxi's there. So, the authors of the scripture in the Brich HaDeshah have the authority from Yahweh to take a verse and to apply it in a metaphor, in a parable, in an allegory to make a point about the good news. They have that authority. And many times they purposely misquote the Bible to make a point. So how do I know if what they did was correct? Same way you know if the Torah is correct. Without faith, it is impossible to please Yahweh. Those who come to Yahweh must believe that He is. And He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. So, so there are many times where the Bricha Shah changes a scripture out of its original context to glorify Yeshua. And I believe Yeshua did that to exalt his son himself. But there are many times. So you better do some studying and don't be shaken. Verse 3, Barnabas 
Then what do you say? He that believes in him shall live forever. Here's a perfect example. Barnabas takes Isaiah 26. It says, he that believes in him will not be ashamed, and changes it, takes out the word ashamed, and puts in the words live forever. Perfect example. Is then our hope in a stone? So Barnabas says, he is the living stone that Yahweh has put in Zion. So Barnabas asked a rhetorical question. Then is our hope in a stone? Before you answer that, because he is the living stone. He is the rock of Zion. He is the chief, what? Cornerstone. Tehillim 118, verse 22. How does that read? Eben masu ha bonim Eben masu ha bonim the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. To that of Yahweh. So if Yeshua has become the Rosh Pina, remember those words, Zechariah? The Rosh Pina, cornerstone. If Yeshua has become the Rosh Pina, the cornerstone of the renewed temple, his body of believers, then our 